It's so hard playing Resident Evil Village with one hand while my other hand is holding my, my Bible. Because I'm a good boy, that's right. Now breaking news, Kotaku gets reamed by the entire internet for dissing the big Tiday vampire mama. Now let me make this clear. Now would be a bad time to attack the lady Dimitriscu since we're all simping for her. Because literally, the moment we all saw her, we all said, Damn, look at them mommy milkers. She's got two big tankers and a massive big backyard. I definitely wouldn't mind exploring because this babe can't be cancelled. Do you hear me, soy boys? Okay, look, joking aside, Resident Evil finally took a page from anime and made a game full of waifus where Lady Dimitriscu's daughters sneak up behind you and give you a reach around. Hold on, wait a second, that's not in the game, that's just my imagination. Anyway, look, in Resident Evil 7, you're asking yourself, is Big Jack still here? But in Resident Evil 8, you're asking yourself, is the big woman still here? And speaking of vampires who suck the fun out of absolutely everything. I wonder how these f***ing losers are doing because not only is Kotaku a sinking ship but instead of patching up the leaks in the ship they are drilling more holes because oh no people are having fun Kotaku to the rescue we must put a stop to this it must be a slow day over there even for their standards you don't want Resident Evil Village's tall vampire lady to step on your face who are they to tell me that I don't want a 10 foot tall vampire lady with blade fingers to step on my face don't tell me how to live my life because the SJWs hate any woman that isn't a whale with short brightly colored hair and a sweaty oversized Gunt. <laughs> anyway, look, they ask for more women representation in video games, and the developers do exactly just that. They add more women to the story, and then these widows complain that this is not what they meant, and they start a new complaint and demand more representation because the first time wasn't good enough. These fucking clowns will never be pleased at all. Anyway, let's get to the rest of this article. You really don't. Clocking in at 2.9 meters tall, Lady Dimitriscu is probably the absolute last individual you want stepping on you. Unlike Lady D's height, we don't have a canonical mass, so we're gonna have to estimate it indirectly. And to do that, he used the concept of the body mass index, which is an imperfect way to correlate height with mass and health. And with that, he was able to figure out that the character apparently weighs 450 pounds. I mean, think about how pathetic these people are. They got all serious and scientific over a meme. Let that sink in. And by the way, these are the same people who say that we're the privileged ones. But anyway, I want to make a point. These neon haired colored people are like real women have curves. The skinny physique is very unrealistic because where are her organs and not every woman is a size two. So what does Capcom do? They introduce a nine foot, six inches tall woman with curves at 450 pounds and the blue head weirdos are like cancel her cancel her right now kotaku is nothing more than internet trash the trailer park of the digital world anyway let's get back to this shitty article but since dimitriscu wears high heels that's where things get really dangerous if she were to step on people granted it depends how quickly she stepped and how much weight was behind her leg i'm not reading any more of this cancer anyway look Look, I know why. They're so angry because it's a female character that actually looks like a female in 2021. Because remember a few days ago, Blizzard censored a woman in Diablo 2 because wait for it, she looked like a woman. And then they proceeded to turn her into Abby Zilla from The Last of Us 2. So let me get this straight. A video game with satanic themes can't have cleavage, the absolute state of Western game companies and Western games journalists too. How stunning, progressive, and let me make this crystal fucking clear. Censorship always starts off small until it gets to the point where it's so rampant that it's too late. I don't see these SJWs as people anymore. They are more like vindictive goblins on the same tier as Gollum from the Lord of the Rings. Actually, you know what? Let me take that back. At least Gollum was somewhat of a sympathetic fellow whereas these individuals need to be yeeted into a wood chipper. Anyway, I'm straying off topic. I can't believe I need to say this, but if you're both consenting adults or imaginary humanoid creatures, I don't give a f 
who's stepping on whoever's body part. But you know, I must draw a quick correlation here. This scenario is close to a woke, oppressive, communist Kotaku's dream of the future. A boot stamping on a human face forever. That is exactly what these weirdos are dreaming of anyway. Kotaku just wants to be contrarian for the sake of being contrarian. I am sure that Japan is just happy to take all of Hollywood, the comic book industry and Silicon Valley's business. You won't hear them complaining about all the money they're making. But unfortunately for folks like you and me, we're the ones who have to listen to the screeching weirdos. Anyway, let's actually get back to Lady D because I'm honestly surprised how many people are so easily attracted to her. Especially knowing how deformed and mutated she'll become upon receiving enough damage. She's gonna take that dress off and reveal the worst sort of abomination underneath that you've ever seen. In her final form, she's gonna look like YouTube CEO Susan Woke Suzuki with a rotting labia. Anyway, look, let's get to my thoughts of the 30 minute demo that recently came out. So Ethan talks more in the demo than the entirety of Resident Evil 7. He travels to a small remote European village and all of the villagers are 95% American. That's very immersive Capcom, great job. Anyway, look, at the beginning of the demo, he sees a dark shadowy figure with skulls all over with drawing symbols on the ground. And Ethan has the nerve to say, hey, you shouldn't be out here, it's dangerous. Oh great, our protagonist is a moron. And plus, he's acting like he hasn't been through some crazy sh already and that is a classic horror movie trope. But anyway, this is my prediction. Ethan is a bioweapon sent by Umbrella to clean up infected zones. That is why he's so overpowered. Now the transition from cutscene to gameplay is so oh so smooth. The atmosphere and the setting of the game has really given me a Silent Hill-esque kind of vibe. And that kind of makes me pissed off that this game didn't come out on Christmas. Because just imagine cozily playing this game with the lights off and it's snowing outside and on that bombshell Mannix out I'm watching you I won't last until dinner do it do it come on kill me I'm here come on do it now. That's amazing. <laughs> 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 